seen before, actually. So I'm honestly not sure what to expect off this. I think it's water. I noticed it was a watery map. So we're going to see sea game. We're going to see ships. We're going to possibly see some amphibs. I hard to really say exactly what we're going to see, but we're going to see stuff. And that stuff's going to be good stuff. Actually, it's probably going to be pretty quick, because sea games tend to go quickly. Man, this is this is turning out to be a pretty, pretty strong start from the tournament. We had one really nice even game, another match which shows that while the lowest seeded team is still they're having a bit of trouble, they are still very much in this. They're very keen on working everything to their favor as best as possible. So I really admired that. The only thing, of course, that I do want to see is that there is, well, obviously, more even matches are good. Like, it's good to see that the teams are at least reasonably evenly matched enough that it can be a tournament. So it's just kind of annoying when you have just four teams you know are going to be winning, or you know who's exactly who's going to win. It's, it's kind of dis it's disappointing. But this is Columbia Basin. Let's get to that. Columbia Basin, a bit of a watery map. You have the ability to start straight in the water or on land. I mean, it's Probably going to see a fair bit of hovercraft, actually. As well as ships. I mean, for the size of the map, it's actually fairly small for all the water. This has got to be an 8x8 map. No, nah, it's small. It's bigger than that, but it's just the way it's built. A lot of the outside is not used. And not really at all used. I guess you could build some ships on the outside water and then just cart them around that way. That's a very different way of setting things up. At this point, though, it looks like Mumble Clan is going for the... Actually, not Mumble Clan, sorry. Southeast. Why is that Southeast? The... Okay. That's a weird approach game. So, yeah, the north side. <laughs> southeast, which apparently I guess is their clan name now. They are going to be playing with two ships. A double shipyard factory. Mumble Clan, on the other hand, is a little less clear how they're going to be playing this. They haven't built anything yet, and clearly they're on Mumble. So it's a bit harder to know exactly what they're going to be up to. Still don't. It is going to be a, a purely seed game, and I'm really kind of surprised we aren't seeing any Amphib. Mostly because usually we see some variety in the factories, or actually, not even Amphib, Hovercraft with the Claymores. But then again, Shipyard is quite strong, and I think players are just wanting to get that Shipyard in there. Like, how often do you get to play a Shipyard? Like, no one really plays a lot of sea maps. They don't show up in the ladder, so they don't really come up. Hey, I mean, it's a way of going about it. Get in the tournament, do the sea maps. That's probably why they're being used. Although, where is Anir and Saniac? This is actually kind of concerning. I figured they were ready, but apparently, no. No, they're definitely in. I guess they're discussing what they want to do, because, of course, they're on Mumble, so I don't know what they're doing. But presumably, they're also going for a very ship-based strategy. Presumably. I mean, it's obviously an assumption. I have no idea for sure. Then again, Mac and Ophelius are also in voice chat. So, yeah, just waiting on... Waiting on the game to be started one way or another. And there's Saniac going for the ships. Anir also possibly going for the ships. Yes, indeed. Both players, both teams, all the players in the game... Going for ships. There are going to be a pure ship match. Starting out with... Okay, so Mackie is going for the... Let's go for the Hunters. Like, starting with Cutter from Orphelius. So Cutter... Orphelius wants to just be able to head up some of the... Some of the disarms, some of the the crowd control. And at the same time, Corsair coming out from... From Anir. They just want to be able to get rid of their opponent's army as quickly as possible, no matter what happens. With the Cutter support from their teammate, from Saniac. So, with that, Corsair, that should be quite effective at dealing with all these tiny little boats coming in here. Clearly, that's the idea. And the Hunter going down on top of the Cutter support, stopping the Disarm from hitting the cor the Corvette. Sorry, the Corsair, not Corvette. I'm saying, ah, it is a Corvette-type thing, but hitting the Corsair. The Cutter should be able to stop that. Unfortunately, it is a little bit separated from its team. Still, though, the, the Corsair managing to get quite a bit of ground. 
Mackey with a counter Corsair to at least slow things down a little bit. And at the same time, Mariner finally being built up by Orphelius. So, much more aggressive start from this from the Mumble Clan team than from the Southeast team over to the North. Because the Mumble Clan, I, clearly they just want to get this done now. They don't want to have to deal with anything beyond just get a few Corsairs, disarm their opponents, wipe everything out, and then be done with it. And now they actually have these cutters, and they're the only ones with the cutters. They're moving in, going into the cove where the Mariner is pretty much the only force available, that and a cutter. This is not going to work out very well. Not for, not for Southeast, Mumble Clan is going to be fine. But Orphelius is going to have a bad day. And that's exactly what's happening. The Cutter being completely torn apart. There is a Corsair flank coming in from from Southeast. I mean, Mackie's on this. But even then, it's just very difficult to maintain any presence. Corsair is able to wipe out everything. Three Corsairs coming in here might be able to get rid of the factory. And it looks like they will. The Corsairs coming in from Mackie, they will help. But they could be too little too late considering that there are all these Cutters here. However, that Serpent doing a fine job at least slowing down the assault, but that's not enough. The shipyard goes down. Orphelius without any production capacity. Still, though, this is fine. The shipyard and shipyard, so they're not losing any unit types. They're just using losing some parallel construction. However, that's basically fine. More so, they're losing the position. There's no way Orphelius can really defend from this position without rebuilding the shipyard. But Mackie is still going to be able to use all the resources to build whatever they need to build. Like zero K being the game it is, losing production structures is not that devastating. It's more losing types of production structures. So Ophelius with the rebuild, but it's not going to be enough. The cutters coming in here, making that difficult. They won't be able to kill it in time compared to the amount of damage being, or amount of health being added to it. And it's a bit of a shame for them. They were not together with their forces. More cutters coming in here from Anir. A bit more coordination, it would have been fine. But now there's the serpents to make short work of these disarmed corsairs. And that is enough. That is going to open things up. The, I mean, the Lotus being something that at least helping a bit against the Cutters, but again, the Serpent's just making that impossible. So ultimately, the Mumble Clan aggression is working out beautifully. Mumble Clan themselves have taken hardly any damage. They've been building up a little bit with their commanders. That's about it. No constructors on their side. No Mariners. There is a Mariner coming from Southeast, but honestly, given the way this game has gone, given the size of the map, it's very clear why Mariners are not being built by Mumble Clan. There just is no time. If you start building Mariners, you have fewer forces to work with, and Orphelia is about to lose their commander, in part because of that. And the Serpent's carefully dealing with that last torpedo to make sure they don't die in the process. And well done! Bit of damage taken, but not much. And with that, I don't see how Southeast is going to hold on. to Yeah, Southeast voting to resign. And... There they go. It's... I mean, Mackey is still clearly confident that they can take something. Honestly, I'm not sure, though. Mumble Clan has such a large submarine army, and there's not much to deal with it. The Hunters are up, but this is why I said Claymores would have been kind of useful, because if these Serpents build up and you have a Claymore, those Serpents die. But if you don't have a Siren, you don't have a... Well, you don't have a... I don't see a lot of Envoys. Oh, no, Envoys don't have the Death Charge anymore. Never mind. Sorry, C's been changed a lot in the last little while, and it's sometimes hard to remember which one's which. But yeah, Mumble Clan, very little metal used, but they were able to maintain aggression the entire time. Their entire strategy, which completely panned out, was don't worry about building, don't worry about metal, just worry about smashing everything they have, because this map is so tiny you can get away with it. And it worked! So with that, they go forward in round two. But at the same time, we do have other matches being played. So, of course, there's always a question of which matches are going to be played next. And the answer is actually kind of curious because I don't know how long these matches are lasting. Looks like I want to see what Sortail and Google Frog are up to. I'm actually kind of surprised. This match has apparently lasted for a while. Let's see what they were doing. So, Sortail and Google Frog, we haven't seen a lot of them. I do want to cast them next time. We did see a bit of Tech Omho and their teammate Mini Shadow Storm. I probably will get a chance to see them after. Ooh, actually, hmm. Maybe we'll watch them next, actually. Nah, let's watch Sword Tail and Google Frog. Sword Tail and Google Frog versus Golden Kingstad is going to be the next round. But this round, it is going to be. Oops. It is going to be Tech Omho and Mini Shadow Storm doing everything they can to not die. And thus far, actually doing a pretty good job. 
Noobs Russ, they're holding on reasonably well. Recursion, however, they're playing more econ game. They're tr basically playing similar to what Mumble Can played last time, except with a stronger economic base behind it, making it even harder for their opponents to recover from this. However, Noobs Russ, they do manage to maintain str some strong economy up until the point that the amphibs come in, and this is actually a big difference here. We don't see ships everywhere. Google Frog going for ships, Mini Shadowstorm going for hovers, and the other two going for amphib, which is a big reason this game is a lot slower. People are not just relying on the sea. The land is relevant. There are more workers. A lot of lighter units that can actually deal with the water. But the problem, of course, is that this is still going to be an issue. The claymores are up, which means submarines can easily be built up, but still enough amphibs and enough distance from the claymores means that those boys, while they go down, it's at a massive risk. And also, with the amount of claymores being built, they can't really deal with the sh ships on the actual surface of the water easily, if at all. But at this point, with the ships up and no submarines there, the one thing that could theoretically be gone for is some scallops. Build a bunch of scallops, have them go along the ground once the... Oh, never mind, the amphib amp factory's down. Yeah. The Comnu going for the airplane plant, which might work, well, actually would work for surface ships. Like, there aren't any submarines, so with all the surface ships, it could theoretically be a way in. Build some ravens. That could do the trick. Maybe wyverns. But now that the claymores are down, we are going to see more submarines being built up. We are also certainly going to see a lot more amphibs. That's the thing. Submarines, sure, they're a thing that happens. But the amphibs, that's the real underwater unit. That's the real reason for the claymores. And honestly, despite the construction of this factory, Noobs Rust, they are half... They have half the economy. They're holding off pretty well. Like, actually maintaining a pretty strong position, considering that they do have a very weak economy. But this is the push. Recursion going in with a full fleet... And Mini Shadowstorm realizing there is not much they can do about it. And the airplane factory is not done. There's nothing being built up there. And at the same time, there's going to be a bunch of units coming I mean, The Ravens coming in. The, mostly the Ravens coming in, really. The Vultures just for scouting. But that is going to be it. Mini Shadowstorm voting to get out of there. Tech Omni. Clearly they have something up their sleeve. But I don't see where that's going to come in. Mini Shadowstorm has lost their entire base. Most of the economy has gone. Everything on land, that's all they have. And Tech Omnu, they throw in the towel as well. That is game a bit less even than the last game we saw. But like I said, Tech Omnu and or should say, Noobs Are Us, they are, I believe, the lowest seeded team. I mean, this is a tough tournament. This is a very stacked tournament. So I really can't blame them for how they're doing. And actually, they're doing quite well, considering. Considering how stacked these teams are. This game, I mean, look at the army value. They were pretty much even, if not slightly ahead for the early part of the game, it's just a little harder to transition into late game on a water map if you don't have ships. Like, Amphib doesn't really do much unless it gets to the land. Hovercraft does have penetrators, but Hovercraft tends to be very fragile. As Hovercraft gets more powerful, they get more fragile. So it's a lot easier to break them. But ships just get bigger. So with that, I believe that is going to be the... I think that's actually going to be it. I... I think round two is done. But I'm not totally sure. Worth checking. So we, oops. we have a... So we have another match that's on... That has been made. That is going. I think it's done. No, it's still going for Hunter Nikens versus Golden Kingstad. It's still happening. Let's check that out. I'm actually really curious, because this is another match I wanted to see. It could be very even. I mean, it's Golden and Kingstad, but they're up against... I said, they're up against a very strong team. So it's Golden and Kingstad versus 400 and Icons. This is... This is a position they could, that could go either way. I still think Golden and Kingstad have the advantage somewhat, but we'll find out. Golden Kingstad going for ships as his Icons. 400 going for the Amphib Factory, however. And that, I'm curious how that's going to play out. Right now, we already see submarines coming in here, trying to take out the Amphib Factory. No, trying to get the shipyard off the bat. Kingstad able to hold them off for now. But really, it's actually, I should say, it's Northwest. The South team that has this. No, Southeast, the Northside team. They actually do have a... They have to deal with the ground units. They have to deal with the Amphibs. They do have a bunch of Hunters, though. Like a giant fleet full of hunters, and if that stays alive, then Southeast is going to maintain their economic position, and actually they do have a very strong economic position going forward into the mid-game. 
I mean, the Mistrals on top of the Sirens are doing a fine job getting rid of their opponent's Hunters, while the Hunters of their own are making sure the Amphib Factory cannot get away with just going through everything with impunity. The Grizzly's still being a problem, but the Ducks cannot build up in numbers, and that's giving Southeast all the room in the world to build up their economy. At the same time, though, Northwest, they do have the Amphib. They can go over land. They don't have to be going through all these submarines. They don't have to be going through all these forces. Even though they might want to just to help the defense over on Iken's base. As Iken is now going down, Golda... Golda's deciding to push in, and that... That does the trick. Southeast throws in the towel after what was a fairly even game. I mean, we, we had to hurry through it quickly. But a fairly even game, and I did like the use of the Amphibs, but it was clear that the Hunters were in place. Kingstead knew exactly what to do to build that up, exactly how to deal with that, and ultimately it worked. So, with that, we are on to round three. As 400 Icons, Google Frog, and Kingstead, they're done their match, and round three, like I said, I want to see Swordtail and Google Frog versus Golda and Kingstead. That is going to be played on... What map is going to be played on? We played on Comic Catcher. Ooh, this is going to... Okay, so we've had a lot of short games recently. We've had two rounds in 45 minutes. This is going to be a little bit slower. Just a fair warning. Common Catcher is one of those maps that whenever you think of 2v2 being long or team games being long, Common Catcher's why. So, let's see. That is going to be... That is going to be the match. Comic Catcher Redux. It is a very large, very vehicle-driven map. If it lasts for a short time, it's usually because someone got cheesed out, but it often lasts for a long time with the map being split. It'll be likely half an hour. We are going to be here for a while. Just, just as a fair warning. But going over, I mean, we have Golden Kingstad and Aaron Saniac being the top seeds or top players thus far. So we're doing Google Frog going one and one. And 400 icons. Except for Google, who did they lose against? That was the one match I did not see. They lost against Anir and Saniac. Now they're against Golda and Kingstead. While Tech Omnu and Mini Shadowstorm 0 2 along with Mackie and Orphelius. Although I feel like Mackie and Orphelius is a bit closer both times. And this this round they are going to be up against 400 and icons. Which likely will be an even match. We'll probably end up seeing that after the Golden Kingstead versus Social and Google Frog match, unless this drags on. Like if this goes on for a while then it will be the only match we've managed to catch. But hey, that's the thing. 